And as I mentioned yesterday, how to pray Salatul Eid, inshallah, in a congregation in your house. So you can pray it individually or you can pray it with your family members, inshallah. Just one minute and we will start the takbir, inshallah, with everyone. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless everyone, Allahumma ameen, and let's start our takbir. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illa Allah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamd. الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة وأصيلا لا إله إلا الله وحده صدق وعده ونصر عبده وأعز جنده وعزم الأحزاب وحده لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وعلى أصحاب سيدنا محمد Allah <laughs> ولله الحمد الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة واصيلا لا إله إلا الله وحده صدق وعده ونصر عبده وعز جنده وهزم الأحزاب وحده لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وعلى أصحاب سيدنا محمد وعلى أنصار سيدنا محمد وعلى أزواج سيدنا محمد وعلى زرية سيدنا محمد وسلم تسليما كثيرا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة وعصيلا لا إله إلا الله وحده صدق وعده ونصر عبده وعز جنده وهزم الأحزاب وحده لا إله 
الا الله ولا اعبد الا اياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وعلى اصحاب سيدنا محمد وعلى انصار سيدنا محمد وعلى ازواج سيدنا محمد وعلى ذرية سيدنا محمد وسلم تسليما كثيرا الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر لا اله الا الله الله اكبر الله اكبر ولله الحمد الله اكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكره واصيلا لا اله الا الله وحده صدق وعده ونصر عبده وعز جنده وعلك وهزم الاحزاب وحده لا اله الا الله ولا نعبد الا اياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد و... على اصحاب سيدنا محمد وعلى انصار سيدنا محمد وعلى ازواج سيدنا محمد وعلى ذرية سيدنا محمد وسلم تسليما كثيرا الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر لا اله الا الله الله اكبر الله اكبر ولله الحمد الله اكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكره واصيلا لا اله الا الله وحده صدق وعده ونصر عبده وعز جنده وهزم الاحزاب وحده لا اله الا الله ولا نعبد الا اياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى سيدنا محمد وعلى أنصار سيدنا محمد وعلى أنصار سيدنا محمد وعلى أزواج سيدنا محمد وعلى ذرية سيدنا محمد وسلم تسليما كثيرا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا اله الا الله الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر كبيرا والحمد لله الله صدق وعده ونصر عبده وعزم الاحزاب وحده لا اله الا الله ولا نعبد الا اياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وعلى اصحاب سيدنا محمد وعلى انصار سيدنا محمد 
وَعَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِ سَيِّدِنَا مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَىٰ دُرِّيَّةِ سَيِّدِنَا مُحَمَّدْ وَسَلِّمْ تَسْلِيمًا كَتِيرًا اللهم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن شاء الله we still have five minutes إن شاء الله before صلاة I need you to prepare yourself if you didn't have your wudu yet be ready إن شاء الله eight sharp we will start our salah, then we will give 10 minutes for salah, and 8, 10, inshallah, we will start our khutbah directly 8, 10, inshallah. We welcome everyone, Eid Mubarak, we are so happy, I'm welcoming my guest next to me, uh, the little Sheikh, Sheikh Muhammad, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless everyone, Allahumma ameen. And let's continue takbir, insha'Allah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Wa lillahi alham. Allahu Akbar kabira. Wa alhamdulillahi kathira. وسبحان الله بكرة وأصيلا لا إله إلا الله وحده صدق وعده ونصر وأعز جنده وزم الحق وحده لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه مخلصين له الدين ولا القير اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وعلى أصحاب سيدنا محمد وعلى أنصار سيدنا محمد وعلى أنصار سيدنا محمد وعلى سورية سيدنا محمد وسلم تسليما كبيرا لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة واصلا لا إله إلا الله وحده صدق وعده ونصر وعده وجنده وزم الأحزاب لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وعلى أصحاب سيدنا محمد وعلى أنصار سيدنا محمد وعلى أزواج سيدنا محمد وعلى ذرية سيدنا محمد وسلم تسليما كثيرا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة وأصيلا لا إله إلا الله وحده صدق وعده ونصر عبده وعز جنده وهزم الأحزاب وحده لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد 
وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وعلى أصحاب سيدنا محمد وعلى أنصار سيدنا محمد وعلى أزواج سيدنا محمد وعلى زرية سيدنا محمد وسلم تسليما كثيرا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة واصيلا لا إله إلا الله صدق ونصر عبده وعز جهده وعز أنزاب وحده لا إله إلا الله محمد وعلى أزواج سيدنا محمد وعلى ذرية سيدنا محمد وسلم تسليما كثيرا جزاكم الله خيرا for joining us and إن شاء الله that's the takfir portion إن شاء الله I need you now to go and start your salah you have 10 minutes to pray two rak'as as I mentioned before the two rak'as you start by takbir then you have extra seven takbirs, then you continue your salah, regular salah, Surah Al-Fatiha, whatever you can recite, are you memorizing from the Quran? If you can recite Surah Al-A'la, that's okay. If you cannot recite Surah Al-A'la, recite whatever you want. And also when it comes to the second rak'ah, as Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do, he used to have one takbir, while he is standing up, it's called takbiratul qiyam, then extra five takbiras, insha'Allah. And after the five takbiras, you can recite Surah Al-Fatiha. After Surah Al-Fatiha, you have Surah Al-Ghashiyah. If you can memorize, recite it. If you cannot, recite whatever you want. You can pray Salatul Eid individually or in a congregation, I mean in jama'ah, insha'Allah. 10 minutes. And I see you, inshallah, 8, 10 exactly to start our khutbah. We can say to everyone, Eid Mubarak. And before my guest leaves his chair, he wants just to say to everyone, Eid Mubarak to everyone. Jazakumullah khaira. Eid Mubarak. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. See you, inshallah, after 10 minutes. Jazakumullah khaira. Stay tuned.
Bismillah ve elhamdülillah ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulillah. Allahümme lekel hamdü ya Rabbena kema yenbeği li celali vajhike ve li azimi sultanik. Allahümme lekel hamdü kulluh ve lekel şükrü kulluh ve ileyke yurca'u l-amru kulluh. Ve eşhedü en la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerike le. Ve eşhedü enne seyyidena Muhammeden abdullahi ve resuluh. اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليك سيدي يا رسول الله الله أكبر 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 All praises due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى the master of the whole universe and I bear witness that there is no god but Allah and I bear witness that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is the messenger of Allah we are sending our blessings and our salutations to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to his entire house, and also to the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our gathering for his sake. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us all, as we he gathered all of us in this room, even online, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gather all of us in Jannatul Firdaus. I start to talk with my brothers and sisters, dear respected brothers and sisters, Eid Mubarak, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your sacrifice. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us all, inshallah, next year be amongst the hujjaj for those people who are doing hajj, inshallah. I understand that something didn't happen before when it comes to Hajj, when it comes to the numbers of people going to Hajj, because we are in the time of necessity. We are in something that didn't happen before. We didn't experience this. And that's why it's so painful even to watch the, the Eid Khutbah, you know, behind the screens. But Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala for everything. We are the Ummah which has that concept. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. We are thankful for Allah and we are showing the gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by accepting his destiny. Eid Mubarak. We have Eid Al-Adha. That's very remarkable Eid when it comes to the sacrifice. When it comes to Hajj. Al Alhamdulillah that Hajj didn't stop. That at least with the minimum number uh, or the, the few number who attended Hajj, who stood in Arafat yesterday. Alhamdulillah, that Hajj did not stop, even with the few number, but still it exists. Alhamdulillah, that's by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It could be worse, but by the grace of Allah, he granted us another chance to see Hajj and to see the people in Arafat. And that's the, the symbol of the unity of the Muslims. And alhamdulillah, you can see, now we have the brothers and sisters are following. They came together. They have Allah inside their hearts. They have the love of Allah, the love of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What's the main goal? What's the main theme from the Hajj? What's the main idea from the Hajj? We learn a lot, but there is one main idea when it comes to Hajj, showing the submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and declaring the unity of the Muslim. And this is what I wanted to talk about today. The unity of our ummah. We are brothers and sisters. Yes, we have different colors. We have different races. We have different ethnicities. We have different languages, but still we have Islam. We are one ummah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Anbiya. Your ummah is one ummah. You are not divided into many categories. That's not the way it's supposed to be. We are one ummah. We are one body as the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during the khutbah of his hajj, during the last sermon, we call it the farewell sermon, 
That's the khutbah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the time of Hajj, he stated that even to everyone. And I wanted nowadays the organizations, I wanted the lawmakers now to listen to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 14 centuries ago, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam refuses any kind of racism, any kind of pigrity, any time, any kind of having dividing people based on their color or their religion or hatred or hating people based on their language or their skin color. No, there is no racism in Islam. Islam against all kinds of racism. That's Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he in the middle of the Arabs, in the middle of those people who accepted his message, who supported him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he declared clearly to everyone, there is no superiority for an Arab over non-Arabs. There is no superiority for a white person over black or for black over white person. All of you are equal in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he stated and he mentioned the verse, all oh people, we have created you from male and female. We made you as tribes, as groups, so you may know each other's and the best one amongst you in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who have taqwa, is the one who have piety. That's the goal and that's the main idea from the Hajj. You can see all the Muslims, they come from different countries, different cities, and they come wearing the same ihram. You cannot distinguish, you cannot know who is the president, who is the king, who is the righteous, who is the strongest, who is the weakest, who is, you know, who is, who does not have money, who have money, but you are, they are one. They came with one dress. They came with one appearance, with one locking, and they are going to, to Arafat and they are saying one takbir, one tahleel, all of them at the same time with equality, the biggest gathering in the world. When they say, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ لَبَّيْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ لَبَّيْكَ إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ وَالنِّعْمَةَ لَكَ وَالْمُلْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ That's the equality. That's the unity. That's our solidarity. Our diversity is the source of our unity. That's why my advice and my message to everyone, please, we need to take that out having the prideness or feeling proud of your color or your uh, ethnicity or your country, feeling proud that you feel you are over everyone. Let's take that kind of grudge, that kind of uh, having prideness or arrogance from our hearts. That's not Islam. That's not the message of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We need to stop dividing the Muslim Ummah based on the countries. So we call that's Pakistani, that's Indian, that's Egyptian, that's Syrian, that's so and so, that's American. No, all of us, we are brothers and sisters in Islam. Is it not enough that we have Quran, that we have Rasulullah Muhammad, that we gather together in Salah, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and before the pandemic, shoulder by shoulder, and we stand in rows next to each other. Subhanallah, maybe we have different colors, different nationalities, different you know races, but still we are brothers. This is Islam and this is the message of Rasulullah Muhammad. We need to learn that from the Hajj, from the diversity of Muslims that we are one ummah and be aware the enemies of Islam try too much to divide our unity and to divide our ummah but we need to come back to that solidarity to that unity the next point that I wanted to share with everyone why we are celebrating Eid al-Adha you can see Eid al-Fitri 
comes after Ramadan, after doing the great effort in Ibadah. The second Eid comes after Hajj, and it shows the meaning of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, that's the time that we need to remember the Prophet Ibrahim and his son Ismail, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the command to slaughter not an animal, not a sheep, not a cow. He gave him that test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذِ بِتَلَى إِبَرَاهِمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتِ Allah tested Ibrahim many times. Then Allah said, فَأَتَمَّهُنْ He fulfilled. He answered positively. He submitted to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tested him in his people. Allah tested him with his father. Allah tested him with his wife. Allah tested him with his children. That's Ibrahim alayhi salam. So when he got up and he went to his son and he said, I got a message from Allah in my dream that I have to slaughter you. And how the son, how the son responded. And this is my message to my, you know, to my children and to also to our, our children. When it comes to obeying your parents, you honoring your parents, that's part of our religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, go to Surah Al-Isra. Allah ordered you. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا Allah had decreed, had commanded you to worship only him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then listen carefully, my son. Listen carefully, my daughter. Listen to the command of Allah. What's next after commanding Allah, commanding you to worship him? And he said, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ And do good to your parents. Honor your parents. Listen to your parents. Obey your parents. You will not get to Jannah, wallahi, without honoring your parents, without obeying them. That's your key to Jannah. If you want to enter Jannah, honor them and obey them. And this is what Ismail did. What Sayyiduna Ismail did when he responded positively to the command of his father. And he said, Ya abadif al umar. Oh my dad, do whatever you have been commanded. Satajiduni insha'Allah. You will find me insha'Allah. Look at this. Insha'Allah, mina sabri, amongst the people who have patience. And he went to him. The shaitan tried to play with their minds. The shaitan tried to whisper one time for his wife, one time for Ismail alayhi salam, the third time for Ibrahim alayhi salam. And they refused and they didn't accept the whisper of the shaitan and they submitted to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and right before executing the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right before putting the knife on his neck, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we have sent something that can be instead of Ismail. That's the sacrifice. That's Udhiya. That's Qurbani. That's the something that we slaughter today to remember the sacrifice that Ibrahim alayhi salam did. The sacrifice that he made for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah sent a sheep, a big one, to Ibrahim alayhi salam to slaughter instead of his son. And Allah said to Ibrahim, Ya Ibrahim. Allah called him. And you have fulfilled the command. You have answered to the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the case. That's why all of us, alhamdulillah, we try to do our best. And as I mentioned yesterday, by the day of Arafah, the, the best actions that we did, alhamdulillah, yesterday, you can ask me today, Imam, by the khutbah of Al-Eid, what's the best action that we can do during the time of Al-Eid? Here is my answer related to the hadith of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa when he said, 
ما عمل ابن آدم يوم النحر أفضل من النحر وإنها لتأتي يوم القيامة بأضلافها وأشعارها Nothing can be done during the time of Eid better than having the Qurbani for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, dear respected brothers and sisters, the Qurbani that you are doing for the sake of Allah, the Udhiyah that you slaughtered by yourself, or you will have someone will do that on behalf of you, that's the best action ever that you can do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But before you do that, let me, let me call you and let me talk to your heart before your ears, before slaughtering, before having the Qurbani, whether you did that back home, whether you, you will do that here in America, I need you to purify your intention. I need you to do that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, oh Allah, I'm doing that for your sake not for showing up, not to tell anyone that I did so and so. I slaughtered a cow, a big one. I did, I took nothing from it, but was for, try to keep your heart safe from showing up, from riya, and do that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One more point before we finish the khutbah, inshallah. I just wanted to tell you, what's the main idea from having the qurbani? not to have meat. Maybe you have meat now in your fridge, more than what you will do. But that's kind of ritual. That's kind of worship. That's kind of part of the rituals and the acts of Eid al-Adha. You are doing that and the main, and the, you need to focus on the main theme, the main idea from the sacrifice. Why we do the sacrifice? To give the poor, and needy and to tell them the message that we are next to you we are here we are supporting the families the poor and needy and this is the main message and not only this we have some brothers and sisters they keep the best of the qurbani for themselves and they give you know what they don't need i would not say the rubbish but they they give the 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 worst they give what they don't need. They keep for themselves the best. Inna Allah Ta'ala tayyib la yaqbal illa tayyiba. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala is the all good and he does not accept anything but good. So when you give for the poor and needy, give to them the best that you have because you are giving that for the sake of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. And what's the glad tidings? When you slaughter your udhiyah, your qurbani, from the first drops of blood, of its, of its blood, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised you that all your sins will be forgiven. That all your sins, inshallah, will be forgiven. And I need you to do that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you didn't decide till now to have your qurbani, be aware. That's not, that's not a good idea because you will be asked before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will tell you, if you can afford it, if I give you lots of ni'mah, if I give you lots of favors, lots of money, if I give you health, if I protected you till now from the coronavirus, why you are not thanking me? Why you are not showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by giving the qurbani for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our sacrifice and accept our qurbani, Allahumma ameen. And as we know that we have three portions, we can divide the qurbani for three portions, three thirds, one third for yourself, for your family members, and then the second third for your relatives, for your friends, for your neighbors, and the third one for the poor, and needy. And as I mentioned, give them the best. Give them the best that you can eat and you can give to your children and to your wife. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless everyone. Allahumma ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. This is the time for enjoyment. This is the time for celebration. Spread love everywhere. 
spread mercy everywhere. Say nice words to your wives. And for my sisters, say nice words to your husbands. Spread the love in your house. That's the time of happiness. Enjoy with the days of Eid, with the celebration of Eid. Spread the mercy everywhere. And remember what Rasulullah said, Inna li kulli qawmin Eid, wa hadha Eiduna. Every nation has its own Eid, and this is our Eid. Feel the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gave you another chance to witness Eid al-Adha. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless everyone. Allahumma ameen, ya rabbal alameen. And just I wanted, before I finish my khutbah, to tell everyone, now you attended virtual khutbah for Eid. Not actual khutbah for Eid. That does not mean that you are not required to have Jumu'ah. You need to have Jumu'ah because the Salatul Eid and the Khutbah for Eid is not actual one. That's why you need to have Salatul, Salatul Jumu'ah, inshallah, and we are going to have Salatul Jumu'ah in our masjid, inshallah, and I believe that inshallah, our brother, brother Ismail, may Allah bless him, inshallah, he's going to give the Khutbah, inshallah, for Salatul Jumu'ah, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. Because we will go, inshallah, right now, sorry, after we finish the Khutbah of Al Eid, I will join the brothers and sisters in the Halal Slaughterhouse, inshallah, to start the rituals and the service with Imam Jalal, with Imam Muhammad Yahya, all of us, inshallah, to present the rituals of the sacrifice, the service for our community, Insha'Allah. Jazakumullahu khaira. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless everyone. Allahumma ameen. I'm so happy to have everyone. Jazakumullahu khaira. That, subhanallah, that gathering reminded me of Ramadan and the sweetness of Ramadan and the beauty of Ramadan. Jazakumullahu khaira. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless everyone. Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak to your family members. Eid Mubarak to your wives, to your children, to yourselves, to your relatives back home. Please convey my salam to everyone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Allahumma ameen. And my gift, the Eid gift for everyone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everyone. May Allah accept your worship. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let you all enter Jannatul Firdaus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive your sins. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather all of us, inshallah, next year in Hajj. I, wallahi, this is what I'm looking for. To take all the group from the masjid, inshallah, next year for Hajj. That's, that will be the journey of my life. This is what I'm looking for, to have almost like 100 people from our community members, inshallah, brothers and sisters, inshallah, next year for Hajj. May Allah make it easy for all of us and we can have the same khutbah or the khutbah on Arafat, inshallah. Jazakumullahu khaira, Eid Mubarak to everyone. بارك الله فيكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته جزاكم الله خيرا سيو إن شاء الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته عيد مبارك